Hello all and welcome to the session of Usability Hub. In today's session, we will see the new features added by Usability Hub, which makes the interaction and usage very simple and easy. The new features allow us to know about how to use various techniques, including video and description about the technique. Let me give you a brief overview about Usability Hub. Usability Hub is a user testing platform and research panel that will help you improve the UX of your apps and website. It helps you get feedback from real people. It offers a comprehensive suite of testing tools that will help you uncover design issues early, preventing wasted time, effort and user frustration. So let's start. In the older version of Usability Hub, there was no feature of template library, but in this new updated feature, you will see this template library. So when I click on template library, you will see there are six different features which can be used for testing and making our UX design better. So for every feature, for every testing, they have given us the example about the test as well as to create it. In the older version, we used to have only blank test creation where we have to select which test we need to do and perform. So let's go with one by one. So once I go with first click test method, in this method, as you will see, as the name goes first click. So I will give a image of my website or an app on the screen. The user has to observe the website and depending on that, there will be some questions. So participants will read your questions and then see the image which you have uploaded. Then after reading the questions, they will click somewhere on the image which will be an answer to the question. So you might ask that for buying or purchasing, where would you click on the image? To view the information, where would you click? So depending on where the person has to click, the participant will click. Once the click is done, then there will be some follow-up questions which will be present on your screen, but the image will still be visible. So when I say first click method, it is a very simple method which will help us to analyze and understand how will the user complete the task. It will, it will make me understand that if my audience is able to understand my website, there are no jargons used and I will get to know what users are expecting and later on what will they perform next. So at the end, by using my first click method, I will come to know that whatever options I have put up, whatever menus I have put up on my image or on my website, those particular options are proper and right. So you can see this, they have even put up a particular video to show up the demo about how does your first click method work. So I will just show the first one. So when I click on this and just zoom in, this is the image which is there. There is a question which has been asked. So I just click somewhere. Once I click, I will be give, uh, getting follow up questions. When I click on that, I will get finally, thank you. We appreciate your feedback. So this is how your first click method works. So Usability Hub has made is really very simplified by giving us the video about how will this method work by giving us the technique and then later on tell us that what will uh, finally a person will achieve by doing this particular kind of method. So this was the first method called as first click. Let's go to see the second method that is called as five second test. Now five second test is really important for us to know that how much a user or an audience are able to understand and memorize our website. So when I have to see that whether the user is keeping my website for a long term, so as we know the concept of long term memory. So if the user is trying to perceive my image for a longer time, then I can say that first click, uh, five second test method has worked and my user will be able to have an, uh, you can say long term impression about my design in their mind. So this five second test, the name goes as five second because it starts from five seconds. You can extend these seconds from 5 to 20 seconds depending on the complexity of your uh, website. So if your website is less complex, I can start with 5 seconds, 6 seconds, 7 seconds. But if it is more complex and I want the user to observe for a longer time, then it can be increased to 20 seconds. Now how does this technique work? When I say 5 second test, 
user will view the image for the uh, number of seconds you have specified which starts from 5 seconds to 20 seconds user will click and see the image once the time limit gets over the image will disappear and then there will be follow up questions later on which you can see and then you have to answer that so how much ever you have memorized in the number of limited time you have to answer those questions so we will come to know as a person or the uh, who has put up this question what is the initial impression of your design in the user's mind? Was the user able to memorize the things? If it is able to memorize, then I can say that my website is simple. My website is really good. And then I will also come to know about where does my brand stand. So all these things I can come to know when I work with my uh, five second test. So to show up this video. So I'm starting with my test. So it says five seconds on top. So when I view it, I will see, I will observe it for five seconds, the whole image. Once I observe, there'll be follow up questions, which you can put up. So as you answer the questions by remembering what you have recollected from the app or the website, which is there. Once you answer that, then again, you will get a thank you page saying that. Thank you. We appreciate your feedback. So this was about the five second test. So you can see how they have made this uh, designing much more simple and interactive. So users know about different kinds of uh, options which are there and they can select as per their own convenience. Next comes up is run a survey with questions. This is quite simple. If you want to take up some survey where you want to ask users some different kinds of questions and you want to know the audience opinion and you want to go and study the market and you want to know what actually the audience need, what is their want and you want to understand about what exactly how will my product stand somewhere in the market then you can go up with this, uh, uh, this design questions so there is a rescaling which is given by depending on the scale you measure your design and see whether your design works really well or not so this is about your uh, Design question, yeah. One more thing about design question is that there won't be any kind of image which is present. There will be questions which will be displayed one at a time and once it is done, your survey is completed. So if you want to do an initial survey and study the market, then design question is the best way to do it. So this is the demo about how will your design questions look like. You will be having scaling. So you have to scale it from 1 to 5 or 0 to 5 where your one stands always uh, strongly disagree and your five stands strongly agree. So you have this scaling, you have to answer this scaling uh, about what you feel. Once it is done, you can continue and then your feedback will be saved. So this is about the design question. Coming to the next one. Yeah, this was about the questions. Coming to the next one called as design question. This is quite interesting and it will be very much useful to people who know, want to know about what, where does your actual website or, or product belong or what kind of brand value will your product have. So when I say about design questions, you will be uh, uploading the image of your design. Users will go through the image and understand the information about the image and depending on that, they will answer the questions which are given. So people will look at your design and depending on the design, they will answer the questions. So you, at the end, you will come to know that whether the uh, user is able to perceive that image properly, whether the user is able to understand what is there. Like for example, if I just go through the video. So there are, once you start, there are images over here, if you can see about the T. So you will ask them what, what uh, depending on the image, what does the user feel? What is the product about? and then whether they'll be able to prepare the product or not. So if you see that depending on the design which is visible to them, they have to answer the questions and then you will get a detailed feedback about what does users perceive about your product. So you will come to know about users behavior, users preferences and you can perceive your brand value whether, whether this particular product will work in the market or not. Next is preference test. Now preference test is basically used if suppose there is a confusion about using what kind of color, for example, there is a confusion which color should be used for displaying on my website. So I have selected two colors, maybe black and then I've selected red. 
So I will ask the users which design is more appealing. And then later on I will ask question why do you feel this design appealing? Like for example from black and red, user selected red. So then I will ask the next question that why did you why do you feel that this red is appealing? So if suppose you are more confused and you want to know people's opinion because uh, if, if a website is based on some kind of demographics then I can come to know about these designs. So participants can show up to six designs. So six designs can be visible to the user and then depending on what they have selected there will be some questions follow up questions which they have to answer about why they selected this one and then later on you can come to know about their opinions in detail. So we'll go through this video. So in this video, as you see, there are two images. You select any one, whichever you feel is good. Once you select the image, there will be follow up question. Why did you choose this design? And then you give the explanation for that. So this is how your preference test works. When you're confused between different kinds of templates, you can work with your preference test. The last one is also very important, which is called as navigation. Now in navigation, there will be a task which you are given to the user and user has to perform that task. So performing task means clicking where the user feels that this is the right path to go about. So now in this thing, uh, participants will see the design and then they will ask, uh, you will be asking them a task to do and then the person will perform the task by clicking on the image somewhere. And they will not be only one screen, there will be multiple screen. So you click on one screen, it will proceed to the next screen. When you click on that screen, then it will go to the next screen. And if there is nothing beyond that, then the test will end automatically. So in this case, you will come to know that whether the user has performed, uh, uh, followed a proper path as expected or not. And you will come to know whether user audience has where they have clicked. So uh, depending on the heat map which is generated, if the heat map is uh, to more towards the place which is the right place then you can say that yes user will perform the right action and at the end my website is good. So just see the demo of it. So how would you register for the business? This is the task which has been asked. So bank account user is clicked then business process then adding the username. This is how you are going to proceed. Then you will ask follow up question whether this task was easy, how did you find the website, whether it was confusing. So you can ask questions depending on the website, then you can have the analysis whether the website is good or not. So these are the methods which can be used. So you can either create uh, in, uh, individual test by clicking on create. So when I just click on create, it will automatically redirect me to first click method. So I don't have to select the choice and do up directly first so in the first click method as you can see over here automatically my first click has come up because I selected that so when I go back to my dashboard I will go to my template library so here you can see as I click on create individual test will be created and there is one more option to create a blank test so let me create a blank test About creating the test, I have shown in the other videos which you can go through it. So I will give a test name. So for example, if I give the test name as hello. As we know that welcome screen cannot be customized because it is for the paid version. So I can customize this. Let me start with first click method and show you a new feature which has been added up in uh, usability hub. But that feature is a paid feature but yet to be known about this feature. When I click on first click method, I will say click on or I will say where will you click to purchase. This is my question. So I will add the image over here. So I've added my image. Now you have to add a question. So let me add not a short test question. I want to add radio button. Okay. So now here I'm asking how did 
or instead of radio button let me give it a linear scale so i can say rate the task you have performed so this is my question so a start value i will give it 0 end value i will give it 5 start means uh, low or i can say bad and this means good so 5 means good and this means bad so let me add another question yeah now when i add another question you will see this one more feature called as logic condition now what does this logic condition actually mean now this logic condition is actually the paid version but i will show you how does this actually work now this logic condition works on only three uh, type of questions if i'm making a, a preference test question i can work with logic conditions if i make using radio buttons previously i can work with my uh, condition logic conditions or if I'm using linear scale previous question, then I can work with logic condition. So in these three questions, my logic condition works. So here I have selected linear scale. So suppose if the user selects 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Suppose the user selects 0. Then I have to have a follow up question that why did you have selected 0. So now in this case, I will enable this. So once I enable, it means that this question has to be shown only if the user selects this question and the answer is 5 or suppose the answer is 0 so if the uh, user feels that the task which the user has performed is very bad then in that case this question will come up so in this question i'm asking a short text question about over here why do you feel that the task is bad this is my next question so now my uh, first click method is ready so i will just preview it i can preview and solve it but i cannot continue and give participants to use it so when i preview you can see this again you have hello there as a welcome page it's loading the preview the response is never saved so i click on start so here it says where will you click to purchase so i will view my email so suppose if i say shop so confirm your click i confirm the click then here suppose if i answer zero rated i will say bad see once i continue you can see this why do you feel the task is bad so i can just answer something and then